could put crap up there. Well, your head's underneath this one triangle, and you need to move over more. Do I need to go like? How do I need to do this? Like that looks like a pedophile triangle. Yeah, keep going, going. keep going, keep going. This way. Keep going. Is well, it, then what's the fucking point of having Wilford Brimley behind me? So he's gonna, <laughs> you want Wilford Brimley in your corner behind you? <laughs> your head well, between those two. Over. Now. Okay. I'm over. I'm behind you now. I mean, I, th- I guess I, gross. Gross. Why don't you take a drive, you and me. Come on out. We'll go out and I'll have the guy from Saw stare at you with his weird blonde wig. We won't get oh, sick. We won't get any older and we won't never. Oh, wait. Wait. Well, he never I, left. I definitely. Hi, I don't I want his oatmeal on me. I started, yeah. Eat your goddamn oatmeal or I'm cutting <laughs> your house and fist fucking you. Hey, everybody. Welcome hey. to Radio Labyrinth. I wasn't talking to you. It's just in general, if you're not an oatmeal eater. <laughs> Welcome to Radio Labyrinth, the Gen X pop culture podcast that covers any and all things. Movies, TV, radio, podcasts, books, painting, as long as we like them. Uh, I'm your host, Tim Andrews, uh, and uh, you can hear me on the radio sometimes, like every day, at WSB Radio, uh, 9 to noon. And these are the co-hosts of Radio Labyrinth, Jeff Lee Boff and Stephanie Swain. Say hello. 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 No rap music, though. We don't cover rap music. Oh, we get out of here. Rap music. We're, the, we're the rappiest rapper and white people talking show. I, I, try to, I try to get it in there where I can, but, you know. I mean, you guys are somewhat forgiving of, uh, not forgiving, but somewhat accepting of my tastes. Well, I like old school. I don't know anything new, but, uh, you know, 80s and 90s stuff I kind of dig. And there's some pop hits from the 2000s that have a hip hop thing to them I dig. I really like uh, like the 80s and 90s stuff. Run DMC, of course. Um, Public Enemy, of course. NWA. Can't say who their name, but... You know. Who doesn't like that? Northwest uh, Airlines. Imagine a lot of people. The police probably don't like NWA all that much. I would say that is not true. I would say there are probably many cops that used to listen to NWA back in the day. I'm talking about not- Sting. Oh, okay. Anywho. Well, anywho. Anywho. What a you guys stodgy did. way to start it off. Stodgy? Talking about hip hop? What's wrong with hip hop? I love it. I don't know. I, I I know. I understand. You know, actually, there's a good COVID song out now, a good hip hop COVID song, which I didn't think was possible. And it's not even corny. What's it called? It's called Golden Chrome, and it's by this. I love him. It's called. His name's Currency. He's very underground. They never. Currency. Is it spelled, yeah. is it spelled properly? I bet it isn't. Well, there, no. It's the C S N sign. This, uh, there is no C. The, it, it's an S and it's a dollar sign. So okay. shut up. But yeah. So and, he starts it with an S? No, it's spelled currency, but instead <laughs> of the C in the end, you know, where it's C U R R E N C Y, it's C U R R E N C Y. Dollar sign Y. What's the song about? Um, it's, it's about, you know, just how you got to be careful who you smoke with now because oh. you might catch the damn COVID. And- oh, you're on blunt, stupid. That's well, you can't be passing it around right. like you would back in the day. And, and like how he had a couple of partners okay. he just saw like a month ago. And now they, the virus got him and killed their ass. And it, All right. Enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would be fine if we started the show completely over again. <laughs> no. You just okay. upset that Wilford Brimley was behind you. And he wanted to, uh, you know what I wanted to do? Bend over. I don't want to get any oatmeal skeeted on my back. That's what From he's uh, oatmeal. That's was like chunks. What was the show that he was on with Shannon Doherty when she was a little kid? Oatmeal Skeet. With Shannon Doherty. It was what called, was that show? I don't know. A home of our own or a house of our called a home some, of our own. A family of our something. He was the grandpa. Yeah, we don't know. We're all we're almost all middle aged except for Steph because she's young. So we're starting to have um, uh, you know Joe Biden like tendencies. Can't think of things. Tell my ankle that. Tell my ankle that it's young. I thought that I was. I thought I was all all set. It had been a week, and I put my gym shoes on Sunday. I was gonna go walk my dogs. Blew it out again. Uh oh. Yeah. You need a brace or something. Yeah, I'm wearing one, but I just I thought I'd be all good, but I guess this old crusty crap body of mine just isn't recovering like it once did. Crusty crap. <laughs> I see my baseball card. You can see it on the screen here. It's a baseball card. Of uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Now, you can't really see it too good, can you? Look, I ordered it from Tops, and it only took about two weeks to get here, a week and a half. How about that, huh? 
<laughs> they do that. He just threw that pitch out like three days ago. Well, whenever it was, Tops has a thing on their website called Tops Now, and every day they make baseball cards from the previous night's games, and they send them out to people. You got to pay nine ninety nine. The crazy thing about this fucking card is it was the highest selling Tops Now card in Tops Now history. And I think there are over 55,000 printed and sent out. People uh, were speculative on eBay selling them up to 200 bucks. You can still find it, but the disparity is crazy. You can find one, buy it now for $12 on eBay. And then right below it, there's another one for 150 bucks. So which one are you going to buy? You know? Mm. Well, I'm sure that's going to be a collector's item when people look, look back on this year of gold. Of how- yeah. Oh, <laughs> this is my 2020 memorabilia right here. The only thing they should have done is, you know, that sometimes Tops baseball card company, they put, you know, like game used shirt or they'll take a bat that was used in batting practice and slice it up into 10,000 pieces and it's somehow a collectible. They insert it in the card. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but they should have put a mask in this, right? The mask that he wore and then took off when he was in the stands. They should. Yeah, they so should. everybody can get COVID from the mask. Well, you know, they would whatever to it. Fauci ain't got COVID. He did? I said Fauci don't got the COVID. Right. So. Well, you don't know who was breathing on that mask. Wasn't me because I took it off because I wanted to drink a beer and eat popcorn like a normal guy. Uh, You guys watch baseball at all? I'm sure you don't, do you? No. I watched a couple of games just to watch the Yankees. Watched a little basketball with the fake crowd and fake crowd noise. See, I can't get into basketball. Not going to watch it. Uh, But baseball is weird without a crowd there, but uh, it's, it's still baseball, I guess. Hey, uh, Radio Labyrinth fans, uh, if you are a listener to the show, please share it with your friends and uh, enemies, uh, especially if you hate somebody. But you might, you know, bridge that gap, get back together, start talking about things again. Uh, share it with uh, us, with them and each other, like bread, uh, Sunday dinner. Uh, and you can follow us on Patreon uh, at Radio underscore Labyrinth. We're on Facebook. Just type in Radio Labyrinth. We have a a main Facebook page, and we also have the Radio Shack, which is run by our YouTube producer and good friend, uh, Dustin Lawler. And uh, we're on Instagram. I believe that's just at Radio Labyrinth, right? I don't know. Is it? I'm not, I can't I'm gonna go remember with what the handle. I don't know what the handles are. I'm going to go with that. And then you can go to our YouTube. Just go to YouTube, type in Radio Labyrinth. All of our shows now are on there. Dustin is doing a great job of uh, putting cool things inside of each and every show and uh you know links and stuff and he's doing a really good job on the artwork and the, i mean it's just i i love it i really do i never thought i would like us being on youtube but there you go well now um, it looks cool so yeah 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 just you know just lazy me not wanting to figure out how to do anything mm-hmm. me either yeah <laughs> Put it up. uh but thank you to dustin we we really appreciate that uh our show is brought to you each and every week by not only uh radio labyrinth producers but uh two clients that we have clients let's call them friends uh, Atlanta Pizza and Euro, who are open for dine-in services right now. And uh, you can go out to Conyers and sit down and order yourself a pizza, a Euro, a salad, if that's your thing. Uh, they provide takeout and curbside service for people who prefer it. You don't have to pay ahead of time. Just go to AtlantaPizzaEuro.com, order online for pickup or delivery. And remember, uh, they thank each and every one of you who have been supportive through these tough times for the restaurant industry. And believe me, they're not anywhere near over. If you have been to Atlanta Pizza in Euro, please leave them a positive review on Google. If you didn't uh, enjoy your experience, well, keep it to yourself. <laughs> why wouldn't you? Yeah, what do you mean? Why wouldn't I'm just saying that if you didn't like it. Uh, why wouldn't you enjoy yourself? Everything's delicious. There. Maybe you had a bad day and you're blaming it on the place and then you go to the thing and you had a bad time, but it was really your fault. Keep it to yourself. No one cares. Um, and let's not forget our friend Brett Perkins and his business, LDI Repro Printing of Athens. They have all your construction printing needs, commercial or residential. They are located in Athens, Georgia, not Athens, Greece, since 2005. With a fast turnaround and affordable prices, call 706-316-9366 or email them at athens at ldiline.com. I wonder if they could print me a giant yellow Wilford Brimley poster. Which, what would I you got, I got, I got, I would. They got them big prompts. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to practice him all week long. I couldn't. I couldn't nail it. So I just kind of do this, and it, I guess it's approximate. It's enough. That's a little J.K. Simmons ish. A little J.K. Simmons. Hey, fish, bend over. A lot of bending over on today's show. Um, hello. That damn Spider Man. <laughs>
What'd they send us? Uh, 40 year old, you guys should be retiring. I, I want to watch The Natural again. I mean, we might as well talk about Wilford Brimley and people who. Oh, when you're eating Quaker Oats for breakfast, you're doing the right thing. Pure nutrition and it's piping hot. What have we got here? Read the Salvation Army Band? Bob Fisher? Who wants to know? I'm Roy Hobbs, your new right fielder. My what? It's right here. Do not spill. <laughs> they kill the grass. Mon petit fou putain! I guess me and your grandma are going away, David. Where to? Well, that's not important. What's important is that... when we get where we're going, we'll never be sick, we won't get any older, and we won't ever die. Wilfred Brimley, man, he was one of those guys that throughout the 80s and, and most of the 90s, I suppose, till he got really old, he always had that really good role in any film he was in where he was playing a, a supporting character. He he took over the film, at least in my opinion. And uh, thing. huh, the thing. Oh, God, the thing. Yeah. Wow. I That's my favorite role of his. Forgot about that. Yeah. Remind That's me. That's what this picture is from. Yeah. 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 So did he get killed by the thing and then turn into the thing, the thing and the thing? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Remember they locked him up out in the locked him up out in the shed. Because mm -hmm. they thought that he was, and then uh, ooh, all of a sudden there was a big tunnel out of there. <laughs> I think the big three. And then he's in the spaceship. My my big three, Wilfred Brimley, in in his long canon, are uh, the Natural, which is one of my favorite movies, and uh, the Firm. Then Tom. Oh yeah, that's a good it, one. Yeah, Tom Cruise beats the shit out of him. And uh, and then uh, what's the other? Of course, Cocoon. Cocoon. Cocoon yeah. yeah. That was such a good movie, you know. Um, Don Amici. Yeah, Don Amici. Hume, Hume Cronin. Is that his name? Hume Cronin. He won an Oscar for that movie. Hume Cronin. I think Jessica Tandy as well. And uh, that movie also had Steve Gutenberg and his giant. Goot. And uh, I believe the woman, uh, I can't remember her name, but the woman alien that was there. She was, uh, she was Nova in Planet of the Apes. That's the only other thing I remember seeing her in. I'll call you Nova, <laughs> since you're the only one that doesn't look terrible. I don't know. It was kind of funny to me that uh, out of all the people that were, you know, couldn't speak and being herded up by the uh, apes, uh, Charlton Heston's character got the hot one. So, well, it's the way things go. <laughs> Rest well, in peace, uh, Wilford Brimley, man. What a what a huge, huge career and, and what a legacy. Um, a sad loss for sure. He's how old? 85. 85. I uh, lost a couple other people. Um, um, Malik B., founder of The Roots, was 47 years old. That was young. What happened to him? I don't know. I don't know. It was, uh, some sort of a illness, I believe. But, yeah, they didn't say exactly, or I hadn't read it yet as to why. But uh, the roots are pretty amazing. He doesn't get as much credit as he should because he left before they before they really took off in the 90s. 
Yeah. So, I was gonna say I don't I, I don't never see him when when you watch the roots like on the on the TV show. Right. Yeah. He he left like I think phrenology. That's when they really kind of exploded, and he was gone before then. Well, rest in peace, Malik B. Um, also, director, film director, Alan Parker, 76 years old. He directed films like Bugsy Malone, Evita, The Wall, uh, Mississippi Burning. A lot of good good movies in his canon as well. 76 years old. Uh, rest in peace, Alan uh, Parker. Uh, co-worker and uh, a very, very, very nice guy. We won't delve too much into this, but it was a, it was a huge loss for where I work, WSB Radio in Atlanta. Herman Cain, 74 years old. And uh, I don't want to talk anything about the circumstances or the things that happened afterwards. They're going to name that studio after him? On Twitter? I don't know. I hope so. They should, but, WSB, they should name that studio after him. Herman Cain Studio. Well, no one's yeah. in it anyway, but yeah, well, maybe when we come back. But um, we're very, 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 very tough loss. If you knew him and you weren't, um, you know, submerged in the politics that surround people like radio hosts or politicians like Herman, um, he's a very nice guy and he had a very good sense of humor. He was very generous and very warm and uh, certainly will be missed. If, if you ever interacted with him um, and you knew him as a person, then all the political shit just goes out the window and it's just you and this person who's really smart and funny. So rest in peace, Herman. And, uh, and I, oh yeah, last but certainly not least, uh, Renny Santoni died this week, 81 years old. And you will know him from a lot of things, character actor for years and years and years. Uh, but uh, Seinfeld immortalized him with uh, Poppy. I'm going to make you a very special meal. <laughs> Poppy's a little sloppy. It's kind of coincidental that the guy who's who's mostly famous for not washing his hands died this year of the COVID. <laughs> right. Did he die of COVID? I didn't know what he died of. No, the, he said, people said he had a long illness, so. Yeah. That's probably cancer or something. I first remember him from Dirty <laughs> Hill when he played uh, Chico Gonzalez. I mean, you couldn't give him a more uh, Latino, Hispanic name from back then. <laughs> hey, let's just call him a Chico. But uh, he was a good character in that movie. And uh, Dirty Harry from 1971. Um, then just tons and tons of stuff. He's in Cobra. Yeah, he was in a ton of stuff. Yeah. Uh, Cobra, didn't he wear like a little leather cabby hat in Cobra? Probably. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's in private parts. He was in that, that group of people, the two or three people that played an NBC executive on, uh, on various movies and TV shows. Mm -hmm. he, yeah, he was, in, uh, he was in private parts. In the late shift, Doctor Doolittle. These are things from our era: Groundhog Day, the Brady Bunch movie, just everything, and a lot of TV too. Um, so, uh, rest oh yeah, he was on Barney Miller, wasn't he? As the, I think he did a couple episodes of Barney Miller. Right, I have to look into that. It's possible. Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid, Brewster's Millions, Bad Boys, the original Bad Boys. You remember that one? The original Bad Boys movie with Sean Penn. Oh yeah, when he put the booger in his green beans. I couldn't eat green beans like till I was in my twenties. Or his smart roommate made that bomb. In, in the boom box that blew that guy's head off. Oh, yeah. That was, a, that was a disturbing movie to watch when I was 12 years old because I was like, oh, I love Sean Penn. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> a little <laughs> buff. I definitely didn't want to go to juvie after I watched that movie. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. That, that scared the shit out of me. That's, you know, that and uh, Scared Straight, which uh, they were showing reruns of old Scared Straight episodes recently, and people were complaining that it was homophobic and mean. I'm like, well, look, how do you think it kept people out of jail? Nobody in the 80s wanted to get, um, you know what? So I still don't. I still think even in 2020, things are not politically correct at prison. <laughs> no, no, you're just gonna have to. You know, you why don't you go work on the prisons? If you're gonna try to get everybody, you know, to be politically correct and use the right language, um, go to prison, start there. And so when they get out, you know, when, when they release a thousand of them because of COVID, uh, they can share their socialized uh, grace with everybody else. I say just release everyone who was ever convicted on a marijuana charge tomorrow. That for sure. That for sure. Right now, today, delayed. Yeah. I mean, so if that's forth. all it was that they've ever been convicted of, let them out. Well, I'd like to pardon everybody who's ever been arrested for marijuana. And if you're in jail right now, you're all exonerated. You're all pardoned. Go home. If he did that today, uh, There'd be no, no hope for anyone else, but he won't. He won't. He won't. So I guess we got some news. We, uh, we got the Emmy nominations, and uh, I guess there's a lot of disappointments. Oh, the snubs. Yeah, everybody, I think everybody's tripping out about the fact that uh, Rhea and Bob 
did not get nominated from uh, Better Call Saul. To me, that makes it invalid. I, I'm not going to watch it. I don't care. Those two are so good. She's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And the fact that she didn't get a nomination uh, is just ridiculous. It's just stupid. How do you not even get nominated? That's right. cool. like a, yeah. Steve Carell, I can understand he gets nominated seven or eight times or whatever and never wins. That's fine. He got the nominations. They recognized him. You know what I mean? But fucking yeah. Yeah. Rhea Thorn was amazing last season. It's like nobody in the Academy is watching Better Call Saul, and I don't know why they should because it's one of the best shows on TV. Well, let's listen. Well, let's listen. Let, look, the lead actress in a drama series, which is what she should have been nominated for, it, Jennifer Aniston for The Morning Show, Olivia Coleman for The Crown, uh, Jody Comer for Killing Eve, Laura Linney for Ozark, Sandra Oh for Killing Eve, and Zendaya for Euphoria. So out of all those actresses, you don't think Rhea Seahorn should have been nominated? I certainly do. Totally. Absolutely. And then you look at lead actor in a drama series, Jason Bateman from Ozark, Sterling K. Brown, This Is Us, Steve Carell, that's the one that bothers me the most because, first of all, he, he isn't in every single episode and, and, and he doesn't, he's not really a lead. I mean, he's a supporting actor in that. Um, Brian Cox for Succession, which I don't watch. I imagine he's phenomenal. Billy Porter from Pose, who will probably win, giving the direction that everything is going. I'm sure that Billy Porter will wear his dress and accept the uh, best actor. I in- will stick up for Billy Porter and I will say – that I watched, I caught up on, watched all of Pose in a, like over a COVID three weeks mm-hmm. and I really enjoyed it. Yes, is it over the top and very dynasty, Knots Landing-ish in some areas, but he himself, he's a hell of an actor and he does convey a lot of like really good, he's a great actor. So <laughs> just saying, I know what you're saying as far as the way things. What's that show called? Is on Nuts Landing? Oh no. Shut no. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy oh. Strong for Succession. Imagine a good. I know Billy Porter's a good actor. I just he's just so weird. I throw him all over Twitter. Look how brave he is, but he's wearing a dress. Okay, yeah. who we'll cares? Don't. But don't you think that's? I feel. I just hate it when people they use somebody else's avant garde or uniqueness to, to push their agenda. Yes, exactly. Right. So, by the way, I'm five days into not tweeting. Uh, garbage like that so i'm very I'm happy. so proud of you i'm so proud of you oh god i'm wearing a, wearing a dress right now <laughs> well you always wear a dress yeah during recordings <laughs> so Wait, what is, I'm, what are some I'm, of the other snubs i yeah oh some of the other snubs or some uh, of the other things yeah if you want to well you know who would be the worst who do you think feels the worst out of everybody how about reese witherspoon who was on three critically oh, yeah. acclaimed shows and was had big roles on Little, uh, Big Little Lies, mm-hmm. the Morning Show, and Little Fires Everywhere, which was like a breakout hit on Hulu. Doesn't get nominated for shit. And she was great in uh, in uh, the Morning Show. She she, was. Ac- she actually had to act. I mean, Aniston plays a typical Aniston role, and and on and on and on. But uh, she she Reese did a very good job playing like a Southern uh, libertarian type of character. Who anyway, we don't have to delve into it. But she there's was some, really good. There's some good news though, like. What we do in the shadows getting nominated. Yeah, yeah. Mandalorian getting a bunch of nominations. Yep. yep. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And um, you know, I out of the drama series, there's Better Call Saul, The Crown, Handmaid's Tale, Killing Eve, Mandalorian, Ozark, Stranger Things, Succession. Who do you think will win out of those? Out of the series? Yeah. Succession's probably gonna keep winning. Yeah. They Who usually do you want to win? Do that, don't they? If you can lift again. Better call um, Saul, probably. Uh, Better call Saul, The Crown, Handmaid's Tale, Killing Eve, Mandalorian, Ozark, Stranger Things, Succession. I'm going to go. I would prefer Better Call Saul. Yeah, right? like Better Call Saul. I don't also, think it's fair to put Mandalorian in this. Neither do I, because it's a great show. But it's, uh, yeah, I guess it is a drama, so maybe it is fair. But it's only a half hour, right? So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's got to be something else that it would fit into. But anyway, yeah, I mean, it's this is a tough category. I, yeah. I really don't know who exactly would win that. Comedy series, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Dead to Me, which was terrible. It already got canceled. Uh, the Good Place. You mean it got canceled? Oh, they're giving it one more season. Yeah. Oh, I thought they were. Oh, yeah. Oh, they are. I you thought didn't they like were the coffee shop? Mm, I didn't I like thought, the last season. Yeah. I thought, yeah. Um, Insecure, The Kaminsky Method. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Schitt's Creek, which I was so jacked about. I love Schitt's Creek. We just got into it a couple months ago and blazed through like every season. It is so freaking funny. Eugene, 
Levy and his son, Dan, and uh, Catherine O'Hara as Moira. And uh, it's just, it's so great. And Chris Elliott, he's fantastic. Anyway, so if you haven't, I can't rave enough. And of course, what we do in the shadows. That's what I want to win. Please, please. Which please. we all want that to win. Are you kidding me? And um, lead actor in a drama series, Jason Bateman. Oh yeah, you already said all that. And uh, lead actor in a comedy series, Anthony Anderson for Blackish, Don Cheadle, Black Monday. Have you, I haven't watched that, Jeff. Black Monday's pretty good. Se- uh, season, season two got got uh, cut off because of COVID, but it just came back, so I got to catch up. Well, there's, anyway. There's, I, there's a, they, they ran like four episodes of season two and then stopped for like two months. Well, I, I definitely want to see that. I know that people were also, I'm not going to go through all these, but uh, Aaron Paul and Jesse Plemons, they got snubbed for El God Camino. Damn. A lot of people thought they were going to get a nomination for that. For, what was it, a movie? Yeah. 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 Plemons, I, I thought, especially would probably get something out of that. Westworld got snubbed, but I thought, yeah. I, mean, I never even got into it, and I heard it wasn't all that. No, this last season was bad. And uh, you know, Watchmen got a bunch of crap, but everybody's kind of wondering why uh, Janet McTeer from Ozark, the creepy drug baroness lawyer bitch she it's kind of weird that she didn't get nominated for anything she had a really good turn this season they had her on there a lot so anyway he look it matters anyway because they don't even know where they're going to have this thing all they know is it's going to be on abc in september and they don't even know how they're doing it but they could do it in a half an hour if they had one guy just reading them all <laughs> that's what they should do is just yeah. this one and that one uh, and be done with it. who cares really right well, if, if there's no if there's no people there to give long acceptance speeches and shit, if they put it on Zoom or whatever, mm-hmm. yeah, I think that would be Count great. Them off after thirty seconds, don't you think that's what they'll do? Is just do it on Zoom? Yeah, probably. probably yeah. Oh, speaking of Zoom, let me take a second here. I don't know if you guys saw it or not, but I posted it on. Um, I did, I did. On, on Patreon. Starting next week, we're going to pick one person every week who is a patron on uh, Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tim Andrews. Doesn't matter what level you are. We're just going to you know, pick people who are available. You get to come on five, six, seven minutes maybe. Tell us your uh, staff pick, what you're watching, and maybe even ask us uh, a question, any of us. So I think that'll be fun. Yeah, man. I l- really look forward to that. I think it'll yeah. be a lot. Of, that'll be a blast. You might as well take time to plug our guest for next week too, if you would like, our guests. Yeah, next week we got uh, Justin Brown and Brandon Collins, and they're from the Medium Popcorn Podcast. Who, I, that was a staff pick of mine, I don't even know, two or three years ago. I l- love their podcast, and they basically just spoil movies. So if you, awesome. haven't, if you haven't seen Wife the movie, <laughs> so if you haven't seen the movie and you don't want it spoiled, don't listen to their podcast because they go through it from beginning to end in their own unique way of doing things. What's what I enjoy most is uh, when they do new movies is great, but I love it when they do an old movie because Brandon is more our age. He's like 40s. Yeah. Justin is in his 30s. So they <laughs> a lot of times it'll be an 80s movie that Brandon holds in high, high regard like we do. And then Justin is seeing it for the first time as a 30 something year old. And he just thinks it's complete crap. He sees every <laughs> flaw nice. in it. And it's not that he's wrong, but, you know, they like to argue about that. So they're very funny guys. They're both actors. They've both been background actors in lots of movies. They have really funny stories, but they're coming on to plug their Zoom movie night. Ooh. So, yeah, so their patrons uh, of their show will be able to uh, access. They'll send them a link, and they're all going to watch Mortal Kombat together on August 21st. Uh, how does that work? Well, let's we'll talk to them about it when they're all on right. the show, and they can... Uh, put us on the other idea so we can do it exactly i mean i'm gonna tell them we're totally gonna rip them off yeah. i mean that's that's <laughs> that's a given they are the first people in history to get a bunch of their fans together and watch a movie yeah i mean <laughs> really nobody else has ever done that oh no, no but this is i think this is their second movie night we'll just project it on that wilford brimley background <laughs> that's what and you'll just see the back of my head eating popcorn <laughs> yeah <laughs> the whole Absolutely. time Guys, I haven't had popcorn in, in like a month. I'm a dick. I love popcorn. I haven't had anything. I have no fries, no starts, nothing. I'm jonesing. You've had kale chips, you liar. I made those. Those are kale chips. That's not junk food. I love kale <laughs> chips. You yeah. put barbecue flavoring on it? I'm, I, could, I boiled them in, or I, I no, you put a little bit of olive oil on them and you massage it so the olive oil gets in the, uh, into every leaf. Then you add a little garlic salt and then you 
this recipe I made called for almond flour. I tried it. It sucked. I'm never going to make it with almond flour again. Fuck you to the people who did. And put some uh, of this shit on there. What? Put some of this shit on there. It's good. What, what shit? I can't see. I'm looking. The Hoff. Hoff's dirty. Oh, dough. I do like Hoff sauce dust. How'd you get that? I bought it. Bought it. Huh. Nice to you know- <laughs> jars of that shit in the fridge. What? Well, you know, um, Longhorn, they sell that stuff that they sprinkle on their steaks oh. called prairie dust. Mm-hmm. And I told my boss that it was called pixie dust. And so she went there. This has been some years ago. And she kept asking the waitress if she could buy some pixie dust. I mean, <laughs> and I was, waitress was like, what are you talking about? We don't got cocaine here. We stay here. <laughs> Okay, okay, cocaine here. Hey, so uh, other than the Emmys, is there any other news stories you want to do? Well, I will say, so so I guess you can't be uh, going over to Magic City and getting those wings, right? Why? Apparently. They're not doing curbside? (laughs) Well, you can go in and and have them. Um, You're not supposed to if you're Lou Williams from the L.A. Clippers and you're just in town for a dead relative. (laughs) But he did. Well. (laughs) Because apparently. (laughs) <laughs> did he get COVID but, or did he get in trouble? Just he, to- I, he, the, he they got, have the lemon pepper wet there, staff. <laughs> I know, <laughs> and I know. It's all about the lemon pepper wet. <laughs> Apparently, they have like the, about the best wings in the city, is what it's it seems to be, and it's worth risking your career and your COVID and whatever the hell over to get. So I've been there for a dry rub. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and that'd be in the champagne but, room. No, right there in the seat. There's so much weed <laughs> smoke in there. No one can see anything. <laughs> they do. They allow. I don't know if they allow it, but they ignore it. People smoking weed and and just having a good time in there. The way things ought to be. You know, you don't need the meddlesome police. Wouldn't it be great if the police, like that, they're contracting everywhere now? You could go into a club and not worry about somebody coming in yelling at you for having a good time anyway well, oh yeah just like the comedy clubs in um vancouver i mean you can smoke up on stage people are getting they're smoking out in the audience nice cigarettes or weed weed yeah if you like That's a cigarette legal. Canada. yeah talk about it talk about an easy room you just come out and be like and everybody starts laughing. Yeah, no hecklers <laughs> well i i and this might get some heckles, but uh, you know who Dave Franco is, right? James's little brother. He's yes. kind of coming into his own. He has a directorial debut that just came out, a little horror movie he did with his wife called The Rental over the weekend. Isn't his wife, Alison Brie? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, his wife. <laughs> yeah, like you, exactly. Uh, I know her more than I know who he is, but. Oh, well, yeah, he's the, the little guy. Like you're upset and jinxy cat. He's a little just, guy. He was in The Disaster Artist, and he was in... A little man here, you know? <laughs> he's the neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah, and he's married to her. Well, he is going to be starring in the Vanilla Ice biopic. Sweet. I know. To the extreme is what the working title is right now. And he said Rob Van Winkle couldn't be nicer. I bet he is. I bet he is a nice guy. And they're going to take the tone. They're not just like gonna make fun of him at all because he's working closely with him they're gonna do it more like the disaster artist which was a i really love that movie i think it's so subtly hilarious and they're gonna do it like that well yeah, yeah. I mean, we've had what now we're at, at uh, 30 years of mocking this guy let's, right. let's get to the real uh, vanilla ice please yeah yeah and they're gonna show like how he was like a little i think he was a used car salesman or something yeah. before he he's like a contractor or something he is now but i mean uh, before. before he became um the ice ice baby he was selling used cars or so anyway i think that'll probably be pretty pretty good and for all of our fans of luther i know there's a lot of people out there that are fans so, of luther yeah. at stringer british stringer bell no no he's a cop in this one <laughs> the exact opposite mm-hmm. and he did like five seasons what are you doing I'm like a movie about luther. <laughs> <laughs> that's what this goes in I can't do any quotes from uh, The Wire. <laughs> well, yeah. He's very, but yeah, he's very cockney on Luther. Oh, yeah. Then. then he is fine. Right. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Well, there's finally going to be a Luther movie, he's saying. So I think that might be, a lot of people thought he could probably do James Bond, which he easily could have, because, you know, Daniel Craig's not going to be doing it anymore for this next movie. But 
and if he's going to do the Luther movie, maybe just stick with that because he could probably do his own series of Luther movies. Well, he doesn't want to get, I, I imagine he doesn't want to get caught up in something like that. He, I mean, I'm sure he would do it because the payday would be huge and he yeah. could pull it off. But yeah. get your own thing, your own franchise. Yeah. Dude, you're set for life. Just like That's, a Keanu Reeves. It, well, exactly. And he's British and he's, right. you know what I mean? It's his own thing. So I, I really hope that that comes out and it'll be really good. Um, Besides and, it's England and they got to piss everybody off and put a woman in there like they did with Doctor Who. That's that's what they like doing in England. With their who are they going to have do it? The, the Dowager from Downton Abbey? Is that who's going to be the, the next part? How you doing? I'm James. I'm Jane Bond, right? I was born in uh, here, but my parents are from uh, Jamaica. So look at me. I'm, 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 I'm the new Jane Bond, a hello seven a. <laughs> just, well, just what Ian Fleming was looking for when he based the character off of his cousin Christopher uh, uh, Lee, who ended up being uh, uh, a heavy metal singer, and also uh, he was also in Lord of the Rings, right? Yeah, he also played vampires a lot in Dracula. So there, yeah. Anyhow, stop me, please. I'm done. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know, you guys, uh, Kevin Smith was supposed to have done the Green Hornet movie back in the day, but Seth Rogen ended up writing the script and he took it over. <laughs> but, yeah, it made a horrible movie. Yeah, it wasn't so good. It really wasn't. But, it was all right. Mm, I don't know about that. Uh, uh, Kevin's actually going to do an animated series of it. Good. Which I think, yeah, it should be pretty good. Um I would have rather he did that Howard the Duck with Dave Willis, but Same here. I know maybe there's still a chance for that if he sticks around. I mean, because he's also um, developing an anime series for Netflix, uh, kind of centered around He Man called Masters of the Universe. Right. Cool. So if he's gonna just kind of like stay in the cartoon world, it's possible him and Dave might hook up. Will it I mean, be homoerotic as the original He Man was? <laughs> I hope so. Uh, one can only hope. Yeah, you can't leave that out. It's important. <laughs> So that is pretty exciting, and I oh, happy belated fiftieth birthday, like because I know he listens to every episode. <laughs> oh yeah, thanks. Yeah, happy birthday, Kevin. Come on our show, Kevin. Yeah, we'd love to have you on. We'd love to have you on. Um, all of the Wheel of Fortune Jeopardy fans, you've been watching reruns for months now. We'll get ready because they're coming back. Oh, good. With social distancing, mm-hmm. and <laughs> they're going to make a bigger wheel. It's going to be the biggest wheel. That anybody has ever seen. You're gonna have to like put the uh, sanitized shit on your hand, and then yeah, you don't want to. Somebody grabs one of those pegs. You're gonna have to wipe yeah. wipe the pegs down. I think that maybe I think maybe you're just gonna kick it. Like they'll have like a kick start like underneath. You just or you know like you stomp your foot. Yeah, yeah. And you mash it, and it spins around. So there, that and Jeopardy, which I'm scared for Trebek because. Yeah, he's got the pancreatic cancer. He's really got to be super, super careful. He's, I'm a, he stays far away from the contestants. It's the contestants that have, that have to worry about each other, but maybe they could put up those Final Jeopardy things in between them like they, like they do for Final Jeopardy, but for the whole game. They guarantee that they're going to have measures in place that will be different, but you can still experience and have the same kind of fun, I guess. Um, I don't think there's going to be... on Jeopardy, get a year's supply of hydroxychloroquine. <laughs> The San Francisco treat. Sorry. Well, you get, well, you're getting a rapid COVID test as soon as you get to the studio. Every contestant has to have a rapid COVID test as soon as they get there. I had one yesterday. Those are so much fun. <laughs> Why did you had a rapid one? No, I had the, uh, the nose one. Well, you, this right, is the you just got test- tested. Yeah, but I have to have a, another polyp removed on uh, Thursday this week. He put a tattoo on it. I don't know what the fuck. They don't, I, you got to come back and have this done. The thing that you had done two months ago, you got to have it done again. I'm like, all they right. Put, they're not putting a rubber band on it and just kind of letting it fall out? No, it's not uh, It's not a, uh, a cheap sex change. Or <laughs> no, it's a, my friend at work. She has hemorrhoids, and they had to rubber band them. Yeah, no, this is a polyp. It's up in your uh, colon. I they really got to dig it out with something. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think a fork. Well, this is what you get for sticking uh, anyway. Um, I don't stick things in there anymore. Not that's what I'm saying, but there is a you did for a while. And I know, but I quit a week ago. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing well. I have no more insertions. That was my that's my New Year's resolution. And then COVID came along. I'm like, how come I stop inserting things? But I got to. Well, to well, it. it's gonna be it's gonna be okay, Tim, because your uh, your fixer upper is coming back. Your your man I saw crush. that little story there. <laughs> 
your man crush chip <laughs> will be gracing the, your television once more on the your upper with chip and joanna Gaines returns to well hey it's on the magnolia network see they want their own thing greedy it's, re- it's replacing the fyi network or the whatever it DIY, is. do it yourself DIY. Or DIY. Yeah. yeah he and his wife they got their own network so you'll get to lick all the shiplap you want oh i love licking shiplap you know i know <laughs> The only thing about, no, you do. about that guy is he fixed his teeth. You know, I like people when they're on TV, like I have shitty teeth. If you got shitty teeth, just, you know, smile with your shitty teeth. Now you make a little money and he's got these big pearly white chompers. He looks like Mr. Teeth from the letter people, if you know what that is. No, don't do that. Just leave yeah. your teeth normal. Yeah, he's got those big porcelain veneers. Yeah. Well, keep your, I- your shabby teeth. What? <laughs> Keep your Bruce Bruchemi <laughs> teeth. Yeah, keep your jewel teeth. Keep your Tim Andrews teeth. I'm missing a couple. Fuck it, I don't care. It's normal. <laughs> like, look, you watch any TV show from the 70s or any modern British TV show, and you'll see that teeth are fucked up. But in America, everybody's got perfect teeth. Oh, God. That's why you can't watch any retro show and believe it. Like, you're watching Deadwood, and everybody's got these perfect veneers. Hi, how are you? My teeth didn't fall out. Yeah. I, I don't know. My, both of my sisters, you know, obviously my teeth, I could chew a corn cob through a barbed wire fence but my both of my sisters they have these pristine they look like chiclets they're pristine white perfect straight teeth and they both your sisters oh yeah they go get them you know they get them bleached regularly real quick (laughs) sisters with jeff in the room please but yeah they have perfectly white it's ridiculous but my last story, and I know this is one is close to your heart, Tim, is uh, looks like Showtime has greenlit a new mafia drama series, mm-hmm. and it's involving a collaboration between uh, Terrence Winter from The Sopranos and Nicholas Pellegrini Pel- from Goodfellas. Nice. So, Nick, Nick Pelleggi. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so Pelleggi, you, however you want to say it. Will it be The Sopranos? No, but no. it may have that kind of vibe to it. Well, Nicholas Pelleggi wrote the book um, uh, Wise Guys, which is the book that inspired the movie Goodfellas. He also helped with the screenplay, but he uh, he wrote a couple of books about that Henry Hill character. And uh, one day, this reminds me of a story. I went into this bookstore with some friends of mine in Binghamton, New York. I lived there at the time. And I wanted to find uh, an original uh, release of Wise Guys. And I asked the, the guy at the counter and he flipped out. He's one of those book snobs. He goes, oh, true crime. Well, listen, um, I'm, you're, you, you real. oh my goodness. You know, usually people who want true crime will go to Walden Books or B. Dalton, but you came into my store. Which, the, for, for the fact that he did that to me, he ended up getting prank called for the next 15 years. So, <laughs> anyway, I didn't mean to. He, he did, he book shamed me fucking jerk uh, but, but that's all i had to say that i'm i'm done i'm done with my stories terrence winter uh, was on a couple episodes ago uh maybe two weeks ago on uh talking sopranos with michael imperioli and and uh, steve sharippa so check that out if you haven't heard it yet and thank you steph okay so what we've been doing the last i don't know five six maybe seven episodes is taking a month out of a year from the past and talking about movies and talking about music and pop culture and the stuff that we were doing during those years. But now we've moved, uh, we're going to kind of take a look back at uh, just snapshots from 1978. So I was uh, seven years old until November of 1978 when I turned eight. And uh, the funny thing is, as as my wife was uh, only a couple, only, only a couple months old then. (laughs) Then not now, it doesn't matter now, but then, yeah. So, anyway, on that note, uh, Jeff, do you want to talk about what you were doing in uh, 1978? Right, I put that car accident in there when I got hit by a car, but then I remember that it, it was it was winter. Yeah, so it was probably it was winter. We I think it was in December, wasn't it? Yeah, because there was ice on the ground. That's why, that's why I cracked my head on the ice. Well, tell everybody what happened. I was coming out of seeing Greece. How old were you? Eight. I would have been eight, yeah, or eight or nine. Um. And 78, yeah, it would have been yeah, eight nine or nine. Yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. So I was seeing Grease at the Twain Theater for the 13th time. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Were you with your parents? I was with my mom and my brother. Okay. And we came out and they ran across the street and they were like, come on, come on. 
And so I ran out after him, and then I woke up in the ambulance. Wow. So they told you, run into traffic, Jeff. Run into traffic. No, I don't know. I, I guess I, I could have made it probably if I had run fast, but I didn't run fast enough. And all I remember is just waking up in the ambulance. I don't remember getting hit by the car or anything. Jeff, I vaguely remember it. I vaguely remember it because – I believe uh, my mother must have told me that you're hit by a car, but there was that certain amount of time when I had moved out of uh, Mansfield, our town where we grew up and moved to a town a couple miles away called Wellsboro while my mother was getting a house built because earlier in 78, then when Jeff got hit by the car, uh, she was in a car accident at this, there was this place where uh, it was a route, what was it, Route 6, and then there was a, a Route 660, and they split off, and it, it made like a Y. So there was a drive-in theater right next to it called the Y Drive-In, and they had a, you could eat there whenever you like. But it was, uh, they did, they had a snack bar. And it was a drive-in theater, Y Drive-In, but my mom got in a car wreck there, no seatbelt, uh, Ford Pinto, I believe, and she ate the windshield, right? And uh, the guy that hit her was a drunk driver who had kids in the car, and she ended up getting a, a nice settlement from that. So we moved from a trailer in another town. We were living in a trailer that, that year. Most of the 1978, we lived in a trailer. And uh, then we moved to this town, Wellsboro, and, while her house was being built. And then I think in uh, December of 79, we ended up moving back to Mansfield. That's a long story. Uh, any, but uh, yeah, so anything else, Jeff? I'm sorry, I took over what you were talking about. No, that's fine. I just got, I got hit by a car, fractured my skull. Missed like a couple weeks of school. Mm -hmm. But that that was winter, so I, I kind of gloss over it. But well, that uh, whole go ahead. I, I do remember going to see Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did you see that? They didn't play in Mansfield, as far as I know. But Mansfield only had. They the, did show the, it. They did show it at the Twain Theater. They the showed Twain it. Twain Theater. The, yeah, I remember. But it being there. I we, I think we went to the one two three in Elmira, and that's that's what I was going to talk to you about. How did fucking Elmira have so many movie theaters? Well, you got to think about it this way. Okay, the, the Elmira 123 was the newest of all the ones. You had the classic one in Elmira Heights, right? Uh, where we saw He Man. Right. <laughs> Lundgren. That was a great movie. Um, and then I think you had a couple more standalone theaters. I just don't remember where they were. There was the 123 that was over by kind of by where your parents lived. Yeah, that was in downtown Elmira. Yeah, but it was like over on the, the west side of Elmira. Yeah. And then the. In the middle of Elmira, like where Pinozian's was, there was that one theater there. Yeah, that's where we saw the last unicorn. Yeah, that was uh, that was Elmira Heights, right? No, that's just right in downtown Elmira. And then a couple streets over, past where the head shop was, mm -hmm. there was another theater over there where we saw Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so great. Little, this is a little, great visual depiction of Elmira. Yeah, but the little shitty of too. Elmira, New York, had three fucking movie theaters. Yeah, but my point. Yeah, but my point five is, screens. But back then, though, you didn't have everything you have now, so people would go to the movies a lot. I mean, right. I mean, our town, Mansfield, doesn't have a movie theater now, but it did then. It did in the seventies and and a little bit in the eighties, not much, but. There was always a line and it was always full. And these theaters that we're talking about stuff, a couple of them were classic theaters, right? And, uh, you know, built in, in, in the day. And, uh, and they were always full. We'd go see a shit movie like, you know, the Masters of the Universe with Dolph Lundgren. The fucking place was full. And uh, the, the movie, you're, the theater you're talking about with The Last Unicorn, I saw Karate Kid 2 there. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, Elmira's not a big city. There's, you know, it's a, it's a small city in central, you know, western New York, but, you know, they could handle it. And then the mall came along. Uh, they had two theaters at the mall all these years. And then when we were in high school, they, they built a multiplex. But it was just two originally. Um, that's, where, that's where I saw this summer. Of 70, the summer of 78, I, we lived in, in, like I said, in, this, in a trailer. Uh, my mom had a trailer and we lived in, uh, God, where was it? It was Coddington, Pennsylvania. And uh, I watched... I had my, my first TV it was a black and white TV and it was connected to cable. Uh, so I would come home from school and, you know, watch everything. I, every kid watched back then. But I remember seeing news breaks a lot for stories like the son of Sam and scary shit like that. And, and, uh, and then I did, uh, I did make it home from school in time to see Bucky Dent hit that. Uh, you remember, I did, Jeff, do you remember this? The Yankees and the Red Sox were leading 
the American League East the entire summer. And then in, in September, they collapsed and the Yankees caught up to them. They were tied and they had to play a one game playoff to see who would go to the playoffs. Right. And uh, so there's one game thing and Bucky Dent, not known for hitting home runs, hits one over the, the green monster in uh, left field there. And, uh, the Yankees win and go on and, and beat Kansas City in the playoffs and win the World Series against the Dodgers. But it was cool that I remember where I was. I remember screaming, watching it on black and white TV and, and how, how exciting that was to me. And then all the time, do you remember 94 Rock back then was like a true FM station. It was really free form still. And the DJs, when they were on, they talk like this. And you're listening to 94 Rock, a Robert Fontner group station. Do you remember that? Yeah. And it became a pop station in the 80s. But they would have every Tuesday or Wednesday night, they'd have the newest album cut on 94 Rock. So I remember listening to, I, they did all four Kiss solo albums, I believe. And I had to put the radio under my pillow because if my mom you know, heard me up at 10 o'clock on a school night, I'd get in trouble. So, Steph, were you, were you alive then? Uh, I was five. Oh. I was five then, actually. I was uh, living in... In Taylor, Michigan, with my with my grandparents, my mom and I were living with them at the time being. We were in between. To we got our own apartment and then did our own thing after that. But uh, I, <laughs> my biggest things that happened to me that year. Do you remember that crap piece of crap car, the AMC Concorde? Remember that yeah. piece of crap? Yeah. My mom had that garbage car, and you remember how people used to say, "Don't lean on the door." Because you might fall out of the car. Yes. And that I did. <laughs> really, I never believed that. I just did it. <laughs> like, how, how's this going to open? But yeah, I get you. We were on Eureka Road. and um, Eureka. Yeah. And um, I'm leaning against the car door. And uh, I did not have my seatbelt on, such as the times. And uh, it just opened up. And I rolled right out into the road. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> Man, yeah, there, there was a truck coming and everything, and I rolled. I just kept rolling because I, I wasn't quite a dumpling yet, but I was on my way, and I just kept <laughs> rolling, and I rolled right into the ditch, and I cut my feet up on some glass. I remember my mom, she stopped her car and put her hazards on and was like, ah, and came, <laughs> came and scooped me out of this ditch because I'd rolled into it. So that was fun. And then uh, I saw Grease as well, Jeff. Uh, I didn't see it that many times at theater, but. It was enough. Me and my aunt, we used to get the record player and we would put it in the front yard at my grandma's house and we would do all the dances and the songs, all the kids in the neighborhood. We'd all be doing this crap out in the front yard. It was, it was such a, a fun time. You know, the drunks across the street would be sitting in their lawn chairs because they didn't have jobs and <laughs> they would just watch us dance. And, and, and we used off. to do that too with all the kids in the neighborhood. It was after, right. It was a good time, right? Thing that's yeah. I ended up, we had, I saw it at a drive-in theater in uh, Wildwood, New Jersey. But the weird thing was, this is whenever, whatever, 78, whatever, we wanted popcorn. They just gave us money and let us walk to the place by ourselves. Could you imagine today somebody letting two seven-year-olds walk to, uh, 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 you know, the, the concession stand at a drive-in theater anywhere? No. no, but I'll do you one better than that because my grandma, she lived at the end of a cul-de-sac but it was a cul-de-sac that was surrounded by baseball fields, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were, you know, every all the little league games played there. So we could watch them from my grandma's porch, or you could walk over to the concession stand. And that was like the ultimate is, you know, you get a concession stand right there. You could go buy candy and junk and whatever. Yeah. But the caveat being that in order to get to the concession stand, you might run into Crazy Larry. Crazy Larry, who was the neighborhood pedo, that hung out and, uh, and all the adults and grandparents knew it. And they would just tell you, watch out for crazy Larry. <laughs> they, did. they would say, watch out for this guy. Watch out for that guy. And it was the town like, eh, can't do anything about this creepy molester guy. But just stay away from him. Well, and also not don't go or we'll go with you. Right. No, it's, go ahead and go get your laffy taffy, but make sure that you don't get touched in your no-no spots. But don't get your taffy laffy. That's what they're <laughs> Exactly. Just watch out for Crazy Larry. So, uh, but my other little highlights that uh, I played in a ditch full of water out in front of my grandparents' house. I was a very ditch-oriented child. I, I, I like to play. I could play in ditches or fell in them or whatever. So I played in this ditch full of water, and my grandpa got so mad at me because he said I was going to get polio. Which I don't know if he realized that we were getting vaccinated for polio. Right. <laughs> You're going to get the polio. Get out of here. Come on. 
And he also got furious with me because I let a dog hunt my leg like way too long because I just thought he liked me. And he kept. He didn't saying, know what he was doing. <laughs> what is too long? Yes. Yeah, what, what is the what's the what's the the cutoff for being too long? It probably went on for minutes. And and my grandpa had already yelled up the door once, get that dog off your leg. And I'm like, he likes me. And he said, get him off of there. He's um, hugging my leg, Grandpa. <laughs> uh, and the last thing is I got a new bike for my fifth birthday. Aww. And um, Yeah, but there was like this gang of ruffians in the neighborhood. They hung out by the train tracks and they were bike thieves. And sure as the world, I did not put it in the garage like my mom told me. And they stole my bike. I had the bike for two days and it was stolen. Oh, man. Did you get in yeah. trouble? Did they Didn't you see crazy Larry riding around the ballpark? <laughs> you want your bike back, kid? <laughs> <laughs> well, my mom, I remember she she and my aunt, we all drove down to the train tracks real slow, and we were looking for them over there, just seeing if I could see pieces of it over there. <laughs> and you would. you just see carcasses of bikes all around the train oh, tracks. Them. And stripped them down, and you oh. see like a random streamer. Parts. A random bell. <laughs> These damn bike thieves. But yeah, that was that was my seventy eight. I love that I remember seventy eight. I that I have memory enough to to recall some of the things, not everything certainly. When we saw Greece at that theater and this girl, my mom's coworker or whatever, her her daughter was my age, so we they vacationed together. And this girl Carrie and I, we went to the concession stand on the way back. Sandy was playing on the screen. He was stranded at the drive-in. And a, a bunch of these kids were sitting on, older kids, of course, were sitting in, in, um, in a uh, picnic bench. And I believe they were probably smoking weed because it didn't look like cigarettes to me, but they were smoking. And they're like, hey, kid, you want some? And we're like, no. And, uh, and then we kept walking. And then when he started crying before he was singing Sandy or something, and I just remember a guy going, <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know what that meant then. And it certainly wasn't appropriate then. Maybe he was asking for another cigarette and he was British. No, 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 no. He was, he was pointing at the screen. I just remember these things, you know. I even remember what the interior of the, uh, the, the snack place was. Now, don't get all mad at me. I didn't use the word. I'm just saying what he said. He said it. I repeated what he said. Sure. Uh, I don't have any invest. I don't invest in hate. So please don't, don't cancel me. All Let's right. go back to the fact that you remember in the movie Grease and like when we were kids, they had the playground and you would go up there and swing on the swings and all that crap before the movie started. Yeah. And because of the pedos, because of the, all that crap, they got rid of the playgrounds because there was kids getting snatched and, you know, molested behind the crazy Larry the ruining it for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it was crazy Larry. Cause we used to go to the uh, Jolly Roger was the drive-in that we went to. Who, Jolly Roger and crazy Larry worked in tandem. They covered <laughs> all of North. Don't Michigan. get Jolly Roger by crazy Larry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm writing it down to watch out for <laughs> crazy, crazy Larry. Larry. Oh, and the Fort George. That was the other really great drive-in that we went to. <laughs> we only had one, the Y. <laughs> You guys right. were very mm, pinkies in the air. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Let's see. In the mountains of Pennsylvania. Are <laughs> you rednecks out in central Michigan or whatever the fuck? Uh, Detroit. Oh, yes. Well, mm, yes. We're drinking our uh, Schlitz light. <laughs> Maybe occasionally your, your, your mom could uh, you know, drive out west of the Mississippi and pick up some Coors. Ooh. The banquet beer. All right. I remember. I remember going to the one, two, three, or, or to the to the Y drive-in, but I don't remember seeing anything there. Mm -hmm. I remember going there and following. You don't remember asleep. anything? No, I don't remember any movie that I saw there. I saw Ten there. My mom took me to see Ten when it came out. Nice. So I'll be, in the way, I'll be in the way, way back. Just don't look back here while while, while the movie's playing. <laughs> I wasn't old enough for that to have that kind of effect on me. <laughs> oh, gross! Humping your pillow. I mean, I did. I knew what was going on. I knew that Bo Derek was naked and I knew that it meant something that I wasn't supposed to know. I had more of an effect on me finding the, the penthouse she was in, in the barbershop next to my grandparents' photo studio. They owned the building and the guy uh, was, wasn't open on Saturdays. They were, they shared a bathroom. So I just go in and look at all of his, he had, this is a barbershop in a small town. He had stacks of hustlers and penthouses and playboys and kids wow. were in there all the time looking at it. Oh, I got some, I got some Conan comic books and some playboys. Don't you look at them. Well, you're too young to be looking at those playboys. You got to wait till you're about 13. <laughs> it's the kind of guy he was Johnny, the barber, cool dude. All right. Sorry. <laughs> so, all right. 
let's talk about 1978. We'll just kind of bust through all this stuff here. So some major news stories from 1978. See if you remember these. Space Invaders, uh, they launched the craze for video games in stores, computer video games. A lot of people had, by 1978, Pong. I think Atari was even out by 1978, limited uh, games and stuff. But Pong was out, and you could buy it. And it was, a, it was a little unit that you attached to your TV, and you played that exciting game of Pong. Uh, and, uh, or you could shoot you know, the remote control gun at things. But Space Invaders, video games in general, started popping up in stores. So I would stand there and play it while my grandmother shopped. Usually, I mean, it was a choice for, for my grandma. It was either I tag along with her while she shops and I beg for everything, or she gives me, you know, two dollars worth of quarters, and I stand there while she shops and play uh, Space Invaders. So, you guys remember playing video games that early in life? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, Dairy Treat had Space Invaders. That's right. Oh, I forgot about that place, Steph. I wish we could all get in a time machine and go to Dairy Treat or Dairy Dairy what? Dairy. dairy. Treat. Yeah, it was on uh, Route 15 out in Covington, right? Oh, on the way to Covington. It's where the Chinese restaurant was. Oh, know. that's Dairy Treat. I'm Fast, thinking of the and crew. I'm thinking of the Dairy Bar, which was down, you know, the it would anyway. Dairyland. Dairyland. It was a farm and they had fresh ice cream and really good food. Anyway. This you, is such a preview of the nursing home with you guys. This entire episode. Is a you're talking about Dairy Queen, Dairy Street, or Dairy Bar. I can only you two assholes in the dining room at the nursing home. No. It was Pudgies on Main, not Pudgies on First. You know, it was the House of Pizza on North Dairy, Academy Dairy Street. Dairy Treat was down, was down the street because we, we lived on East Main Street, and it was down at the end, of, the end of Main Street across from the Bowling Alley. Yeah, I know. And we would walk from my, my house down there to get ice cream. Yeah, and the guy who owned it ended up owning McDonald's. He he yeah. sold that place and then bought the two, two or but three McDonald's franchises. I was just franchise. eight or nine years old. My brother would have been six. Yeah, and we just walked all the way down to the end of town. Nobody cared. We, we played poor, played video mom. games and ate ice cream. My mom got ice cream from Sears. That's because we were poor. My brother would have chocolate ice cream all over his entire face and in his yeah. hair by the time we got back to our house yep. for some reason. Yeah, our Sears, our Sears had a had a Saunders ice cream parlor in it. Oh, I was kidding. I didn't know Sears had ice cream parlors. Yeah, the one ours did in Lincoln Park. It had a Saunders ice cream parlor inside of it. That doesn't even matter. Did you get that? <laughs> no. Lincoln Park. Okay, never mind. Oh, oh, ooh. Yeah, okay. You know, Chester Bennington is John Podesta's son. Anyway, oh, God, I got caught in a conspiracy loop there for a second. Oh, sorry. Come back uh, to him. What? I said, come back, Tim. I'm um, Tim's back. Uh, Roman Polanski flees to France, so he doesn't end up going to jail for banging that kid in the uh, hot tub. Give him a break. His wife was killed. Uh, first test uh, tube. What's the statute of limitations on that, by the way? On if he comes back to the United States. Well, I think he would kind of, he would go to jail for fleeing for one thing. All right, but, but isn't a, it's, hasn't it been long enough? No, he would go to jail and face trial. I know, but that's stupid. Like, well. Don't do that kind of thing, I guess. Does that apply to, does that apply to Jeff in Tortuga? Huh? I said, does that apply to Jeff going back to Tortuga? <laughs> yeah, Tortuga or whatever. No, I would, no, no. Roman I would be needs, by all the drug dealers. He needs to stay, yeah. He needs to stay wherever he is. He's going to die probably in the next five, ten years. Don't come back to the United States or you're going to spend the rest of your life in jail. What point of that? And, you know, you could have thought about that. I know he was grieving, but he he – cheated on uh, Sharon Tate all the time. He was a scumbag. He liked having sex with young girls, and that's, that's all he liked to do other than direct and, and make movies. So, um, you know, you, you, what do they say nowadays? Um, you fucked around and found out. That's the new way of saying something else. Um, the first two, uh, test tube baby was born in 1978. I remember that being on the news all the time, thinking that they grew a baby in a tube. Uh, but nowadays it's better known as IVF and it's so commonplace. But back in 19, do you remember people were fighting over whether it should even be legal that there were ethical concerns because it wasn't conceived naturally uh, or, you know what I mean? Do you, I don't know if you remember that, but yeah. that's true. Um, cult leader, Jim Jones uh, took all of his people to Guyana in South Carolina, the people's temple. And uh, when congressional people went down to investigate, they got killed. And then he murdered all of them. He had them all commit suicide by drinking the magic Kool-Aid. And that's where that comes from. Are you drinking the Kool-Aid? Well, yeah. No. Um, 
Susan B. Anthony dollar was released and uh, quickly abandoned and, or hoarded. My dad, I think, probably used to have like 10,000 of them. But oh yeah, but uh, they, they, they weren't used because they were roughly the same size as a quarter. So, you know, people were like, well, I, I remember get, getting Susan B. Anthony dollars back instead of quarters and being so psyched. Really? Like, yes. Yeah. I got a quarter the other day. It was a 2020 quarter that had a bat giving birth to another bat on it. <laughs> yeah, it's the year of the bat. That's why. <laughs> I know. I really, well, when I saw it, I was like, what the hell is this? Is this some kind of creepy COVID quarter? What is this shit? And I didn't realize it's for some national park. Yeah, the bat park. It's already worth a dollar fifty or something. Really? Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah, I'm not kidding you. I mean, there's really, it's a bat with a go, baby bat. Goes- Dollar fifty. Yeah, uh, I know it's a quarter, but I mean, look it up. Steph, and, uh, Steph's the reason there's that big coin shortage. <laughs> there's a whole subsection. You guys might not know this. There's a whole subculture of people who collect even modern money that you wouldn't think would be worth anything based on the rarity of the serial numbers. And they go through and they go through the coins, and it's crazy shit. Don't ever clean them. Got to have that original patina. Oh, that's right. Don't clean a COVID off of your change. The way they do it with the mint, though, is that they make a, a certain number of them rare. Yeah. So that like one quarter can be worth ten bucks if you if you're looking for it. I'm gonna take a picture of this back quarter and I'll send it to you guys. Yeah. But it really freaked me out too because I was I think I had been drinking that night and then I was like, what is happening? Um. Let's see. A couple more things and then we'll move on to music and stuff. Uh, David Berkowitz, the serial killer known as the Son of Sam, who was convicted of murder, ended up going to jail for life because he's in New York. Um, and he had 12 months of that shit, an entire year. A couple good things came out of the Son of Sam. The Summer of Sam is a, is a very, to me, under, underrated Spike Lee movie. A lot of great. great actors in it. And I think he did a fucking great job of capturing the anxiety um, a lot of films about serial killers or the shit that's going on around them doesn't capture the anxiety. And he had a couple different tales woven in there. You know, it was, uh, God, what's his name? The actor's name. He was, um, Leguizamo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was fantastic in that film mm-hmm. and, uh, everyone else as well. Um, yeah, it, it, just check it out. If you've never seen it and you're like, oh, well, it's Blake Lee, go watch it. Cause it's a good movie and I, I very highly recommend it um he does he does new york movies like nobody can just yes. because he's such a like he is of it was like he's born of the concrete there he is he, new york he was there when that happened and, and people don't realize that in the 70s new york was a fucking dump mm. and it like if you just watch that show about the mafia on uh on netflix fear city yeah new york was a fucking shithole constantly on fire buildings falling down a mayor who you know had to beg money from the federal government. It was crazy. So in five years after New York collapses and looks like that again, because of the Blasio, you'll be able to relive it. So <laughs> fantastic. Um, and then there was a series on ESPN that got into something and I can't remember the name of it, but it was about the Yankees and it was about the son of Sam and Jimmy Breslin, I believe. Do you remember what that was called? Jeff, we watched it. Um, uh, uh, Jesus was in it. You know what I'm talking about? Don't mess with the Jesus. Arturo? Yeah, Totoro played Billy Martin. Do you remember that? No. It's on ESPN. I'll, I'll, I'll think about it here. Maybe one of you two could look it up while I keep going. I don't know. Um, and then, uh, of course, it was a great year for movies, 1978. Uh, talking about uh, Greece, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which I was too scared to watch because I was afraid of UFOs. I didn't know what they were. It was scaring me, aliens. I didn't like piles of mashed potatoes. Well, no, I mean, it's, that's great. Yeah, that scared you. When they're, when they're trying to get in the house, that was scary. When all the lights are going off and everything. and the- Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. The, 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 everything's shaking and the kid. Yeah. Like, oh, no, thanks. I'm out. It's boring. It's a boring movie, I think. I remember yeah. seeing it when I was a kid and, I was, and the whole... Burr, 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 burr. I'm like, is, this is it? This is what the fuck we've been waiting for this entire time? Is right. It's like... Kid Star with a damn Casio... Star Wars had aliens in it the whole time, and this one's just some guy going nuts. <laughs> this means something. Um, and of course, Saturday Night Fever, Greece. It was the summer. It was the year of John Travolta. John Travolta, yeah, yeah, John Travolta. It could be Grease Lightning. Come on, go just go go out to the car with me. Go out to the car with me just for a little bit. 
Do you see that there's a, a theory that the whole movie is just a dream and Sandy drowned at the beach and at the end he kills himself and that's how they, they're going in the car? Oh, wow. It's dark. Weird shit. <laughs> what a weird shit people talk about. So I decided, guys, if we're going to talk about the 70s and we're going to talk about the late 70s, I'm going to do Eddie Money. Now, I know Eddie Money passed away a long time ago. Uh, a couple years ago, and it sucks because he was doing a radio show. He was a good guy. You know, I love every Eddie Money, even the 80s shit that sucks. I like that uh, 80, 80s uh, Eddie Money, too. So you guys, you want to hear the top 10 songs? Yeah. In 1978. All right, I'll start with number 10. Two Tickets to Paradise, and that's me talking about music. Give me some water. I just killed a man at the Mexican border. <laughs> ooh, ooh, water! <laughs> I got pranked by Longmont uh, Motion Castle. I don't need any rocks. I'm Eddie Money. I'm at the Mohegan Sun. I don't need any rocks. Check it out if you never heard it. Number 10, An Everlasting Love by Andy Gibb. Do you guys like Andy Gibb? Yeah. He was a, his brothers were the, were the Bee Gees. He was huge. He, he was too cool to be a Bee Gee. Yeah, too good looking. They were all kind of weird looking. They, one of them looked like the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> that weird... One guy looked like a gay porn star with his beard, but, you know, Andy Gibb was great. He hosted Solid Gold with Dionne Warwick and Marilyn McCoo and got the bang Victoria Principal, and then he died. But what a good life. He did the shadow dancing. Yeah, he did all that shit. Uh, number nine, Walter Egan, Magnet and Steel. Now, who's Walter Egan, Jeff? He's not the... The dude from Steely Dan, right? No, I don't know. That's why I asked. But he had a hit song called Magnet and Steel. You are the magnet and I am the steel, baby. Oh, you are the magnet and I... Okay, now that you say it. Yeah, yeah that. Okay. Here's another guy from New York City, uh, Barry Manilow. You can tell in his name that uh, he's a Barry and he's a Manilow. And he played the <laughs> piano... He hung out with Bette Midler and all the underground gay clubs in the early 70s. And then as a good songwriter, he was. Uh, he, he made a whole bunch of hit songs. And one of them was called Copacabana. And it was on the radio nonstop in 1978. If you had Barry Manilow live, what an amazing performance. At the Copa, Copacabana. <laughs> I remember uh, listening to that on 8-Track. Yeah, oh God, yeah. They did it. Skip in the middle, like it fade out and, and then start again. Like, yep. Like the meatloaf eight track. Wow. <laughs> Coming in at number seven, Pablo Cruz. Love will find a way, man. Love will find a way. What a great band Pablo Cruz was, man. Yeah. Love will find a way. I think. Isn't that how it goes? Yeah. Sorry, I can't stop moving around. <laughs> Someone done you wrong. Great song. Uh, listen, you take some hot chicks, you call yourselves a taste of honey, you get a little disco beat. Boogie, oogie, oogie. What a great song. And every kid laughed because it said boogie. And then it said boogie and uh, boogie, boogie, boogie. But everybody loved it, right? Did you guys love that song? I still boogie, love that song. Boogie, yeah. Yeah, I still love it too. They play it in the jukebox up here in heaven all the time. <laughs> It's the biggest jukebox you've ever seen. It's twice as the size of Jupiter, and it has every song ever. <laughs> Even ones by like crazy people who don't speak English. All Do you right. have the Waffle House song on there? No, unfortunately. But the big the Waffle House in heaven is weird. They sell pancakes. It's like the Dwarf House <laughs> sells burgers. You know the Chick Fil A Dwarf House. You could get a burger. It was fucked up. All right, number four or number five, Foreigner with Hot Blooded. Check it and see. Yeah, Tim Andrews, the guy that's doing my voice right now, he tried to start a foreigner fan club, and uh, this girl named Becky Lawson, she she wouldn't join because he picked his nose too much. But that's just, you know, that's the way things are. It still happens to him today. Uh, nobody sees him do it now. But the thing, you know, the sad thing he misses most about work, you know, you work in the morning, and then you drive home on the highway, and you get that real big one, and you roll it up and throw it out. <laughs> that was a daily ritual, and now it's gone. Thank you very much, COVID-19. Tim Andrews can't scoop the big ones. The big, the ones that are half dry and half wet. You know, the good ones. Come on. Come what? on, Eddie. What, are you getting hungry? Uh, <laughs> coming in at number four, four, the Rolling Stones and Miss You. What a great song. My voice hurts. 
Sorry, too many boogers. Did you guys <laughs> like the Rolling Stones, the 70s Rolling Stones? That's my favorite era of Stones. 70s. Yeah, me too. Great stuff, great stuff. Uh, Donna Summer. Wow, she was sexy as hell, right, Donna Summer? The last dance, man. It's the last dance. Tonight, Cause it's the last chance. I'll be hosting Fridays next month. Hey. Uh, Did they use that song in the last dance documentary? I don't know. I don't think Beth? so. I don't think I don't I don't think I remember them playing that one. They used it in Thank God It's Friday, the best jo- Jeff Goldblum movie ever made in the history of Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> I don't know. The fish that stole Pittsburgh's pretty good, but that's Gabe Kaplan and, and uh, Metal Ark Lemon. A lot of great classic movies. What are we doing nowadays? So at number two, you got Frankie Valli with the title track to Grease. They took a movie about people in the 50s, everybody in it looks like the 38. And then the song that opens and closes the film is a disco song. What a one. You couldn't get more 70s than that right there. Right, friends? Uh, Frankie Valli. And what a great guy. What a great guy. Four Seasons. Uh, he's a great guy. Solo artist. Uh, Jersey Boys, he was on The Sopranos, you know, latest seasons, got killed, spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> deaf, I think, in one year. I think I heard that. Wasn't he deaf in one year? Frankie Valley couldn't hear out of one year. And not because his dad beat him up like Brian Wilson. But okay, <laughs> number one, the number one song uh, by all artists. Uh, I think I'm losing the voice. I don't know. The Commodores and Three Times a Lady, immortalized by Eddie Murphy in his impersonation of Buckwheat on Saturday Night Live. There you go. There's your top 10 songs from Bones. 1930. Nice. Nice. Three times a lady. <laughs> My favorite one of the Una Panuna Baca. And it's just oh, yeah. no question. Great. This is Betty Davis. Says, did that? Dan and Donna. <laughs> da 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 Betty Day, but died. And that's where they just have question marks. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's uh, I, speaking of the Commodores, one of the guys from the Commodores we talked to uh, on the radio last week. He made a, a big donation to uh, uh, the uh, Carathon. Oh, cool. But yeah, it's a couple of times. I've met him a couple of times. And a real nice dude. Anyway, all right, so let's talk about some of the TV shows from 1978, and then we'll do our little playlist. Uh, top shows of 1978, the top 10 shows, starting at number 10. A lot of these are ABC. Shit, I think most of them are. We'll find out. Eight is Enough, ABC show, right? I can't remember. Yeah, it was. It was. It was on ABC. So Eight is Enough was a guy. Oh, he, was, he, was, he had eight kids, right, or, or something. That was the premise of it, starring Dick Van Patten. Dick Van Patten, of course, was uh, ubiquitous in the 70s and 80s. But this was a huge show for, for Dick Van Patten. Uh, also starred Betty Buckley. Uh, most recently, we saw Betty Buckley playing uh, 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 Preacher's grandma, Jesse's grandma, right, on Preacher. Oh, now, yeah. But she was the woman that married him. He was, Okay, so he was a widower. His wife died, I guess, at the end of uh, season one or something like that. So he, she's the stepmother. Uh, you had uh, Grant Goodeve as the uh, oldest brother. That guy went nowhere. Uh, Lanny O'Grady was on the show. Laura Walters, Susan Richardson. Uh, really, Willie Ames and Adam Rich were the breakout stars of that show. So Willie Ames, you all remember, he, he did a lot of movies. He did Zapped with Scott Baio. But they were kind of like the dudes that hung out together. And Adam Rich just became tabloid fodder because he had some sort of disease. It wouldn't let him grow. And, uh, and so he... Uh, I don't know. The guy who played Grandpa Walton played some homeless dude that he hung out with. It's a two-story arc, I remember. But, uh, yeah, so. You you think Adam Rich still had the bowl cut, like, through his entire life? Yeah, well, he's dead, isn't he? No, he's alive. Okay, why do I think these people are dead? All right, Uh, number nine on the top ten shows of 1978, All in the Family. But I believe by that time, Meathead and Gloria weren't on the show anymore. They had left. Uh, He got a job in California. I think he wanted to leave the show. And so they had gone. And by that time, it was just Archie and Edith. And they had adopted. uh, Daniel Bresbois. Right. Uh, What was her name? God, I I should know that. Uh, I can't. I'll think about it. And uh, and then he had a Puerto Rican maid after Edith died. The pleurisy. Uh, Number eight, a show that defines the 70s to me as far as spinoffs go a show that was really good and the actor totally got fucked over by the network that would be the ropers another abc show spinoff of three's company which was one of the biggest shows of all time certainly at that time as well but uh 
Could you imagine what Three's Company would have been like if the Ropers had never left, Jeff? Because, you know, you love that show. It's one of your favorites. Yeah, they were, they were great. I mean, yeah. but they did a great job with getting Furley in there. Well, see, I'm not. Not. the reasons, okay, so just in brief, they offered the, they offered the spinoff to Norman Fell, and I can't remember the name of the actress who played, uh, you know, Mrs. Roper, but they offered them this spinoff because the Ropers were hugely popular. And Norman Fell said, I don't want to do that because uh, this show. You're on the number one show. Right. I'm on the number one show. Why would I leave? In, in, all right, I'll do it if, if it gets canceled. You have to put me back on Three's Company. So they go do the show. It does really well, but they keep moving it around. And when networks do that, they move shit around. Uh, shows lose it. Look at Arrested Development. Look at all sorts of things. You know, right. Shows that have done really well that are really good, but they get moved around. Uh, also, Jeffrey Tambor is, uh, is on that show, The Ropers. Uh, yeah. Anyhow, uh, it, it, it ended up ABC decided to cancel it. But by the time they decided to cancel it, Mr. Roper had been replaced by Mr. Furley, and he became a huge character. Don Knotts was huge. So they didn't want to get rid of him, and they kind of fucked over uh, Norman Fell. They let the show expire. They never officially canceled it, so he was screwed, and they couldn't go back. And that was the end of it. That's I thought the they kept it on for two seasons so that so they didn't have to keep get, bring him back on, on they, the three company. Yeah, but they, scat, they, they straggled it out so much that it became two seasons. That's how they fucked him out of it. Uh, number seven, MASH, still on the air, uh, had, uh, what, five more years? 78, ended in 80, or did it end in 81? When did it end? 81 or 83? I think 83. 83. Yeah. Um, still in its prime, still kicking ass. Uh, 60 Minutes. <laughs> Angie. Angie's a show that you don't see uh, in, in a lot of places. Uh, uh, Doris, what's-her-face, was her mother. What's that? Doris Roberts. Yeah, Doris Roberts was her mother. Uh, Robert Hayes was on that show. Yep. Had a hit song as a uh, as a theme uh, that played on a lot of radio. Uh, we come to each other from the other side of us. Something like that, right? Live for each other, our different world. That's it, right? Long as we can do it, life is gonna breeze. Well, okay, here we go. Ready, Jeff? Let the love flow. Let the something. Let the rain flower. Something, something, something. See, wasn't that beautiful? All right. They just, they just <laughs> sent you both over some more cream of wheat. <laughs> oh thank you very much to make sure that you had enough before you went to bed tonight Mork and Mindy coming in <laughs> for a great show kids loved it adults loved it it was a fucking funny show and it was still really good in, in 78 too yes it was and uh, my favorite character at that time and pretty much I think other than Mork my favorite character was uh, that crazy guy Exidor Exidor Mork <laughs> crazy dude he was a great actor yeah, that guy was a great actor. And he had that weird hair. Some really interesting stories on that show. Mirth uh, was my favorite character. Mark? Mirth. Oh, me. Don't patronize me. Mirth, of course, played by the great Jonathan Winters, who on Orc, you were born as, a, as an old man, and then you regressed into childhood. Didn't Mork end up turning into a kid in the last couple, last season? Remember. Yeah, but he got to come back. That's right. It was, it was very sad, though. Yeah, but he got to come back. Hey, man. Ooh, me, 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 me. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. Uh, number three, Happy Days. More Committee, by the way, is a spinoff of Happy Days. Uh, yep. Three's comp- uh, number three, Happy Days, is still kicking ass. Uh, number two show of 1978, Three's Company, ABC. Uh, huge show. So fucking good. Still funny today. Uh, all the sight gags, all the jokes, and setups. Still pretty funny. You can watch it and get a chuckle or, or five or six. And, of course, you had the jiggle factor, which is what got a lot of people to tune into it. It was 1978, so whenever it debuted, was it 76? There was sex and innuendo, and, and finally the baby boomers were getting sitcoms uh, that appealed to them instead of, you know, like Andy Griffith's show and all right. that. A uh, really good show. And then number one, you have uh, another spinoff of Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley. Uh, and uh, a great show in and of itself. But that was the number one show of 1978. So I'm going to backtrack here. So you got Laverne and Shirley, Three's Company, Happy Days, Mork and Mindy, uh, The Ropers, and Eight is Enough. So six of the top ten shows were on ABC. That's pretty cool. Wow. Right. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that's a, a, look, a look back in 1978, back when there weren't any uh, uh, pandemics, 
back when uh, there wasn't any internet. You didn't fight with people all the time. If you wanted to argue with somebody about their politics, you had to write a letter to the editor. And if you couldn't spell, well, they wouldn't fucking put it in there. But now you can go anywhere you want. You had to do your do- doom scrolling in the Encyclopedia Britannica. Yes, yes. That's what you had to do. All right. You so, to the VFW Lodge. Yeah. Well, VFW Lodge. Yeah, you know, it's the John Birch Society. It's what you need to join. It's the commies and the Jews are trying to take over the United nope. States. Give the commies and the Jews the power. They're going to kick us all out of here. What about the Shriners? Maybe they, maybe that would be more of a... What's that old line from George Carlin? That's why I say, drink up, Shriners, whenever they're in town. Uh I don't even know what a Shriner is. They help people. They, they do stuff with hospitals. That's why. All right. So our playlist from this week is going to be updated. I think this is about it for our uh, driving playlist. If we want to come up with a new idea between now and next week, that would be very nice. And uh, Steph, I task you with uh, next, the next year, the next expo. Oh, okay. Okay. Can do. If you don't mind. Yeah, uh, sure. I could pick a year without rap music. No, I'm just kidding. You can That's never going to happen. It's a joke. I know. It's a joke. It's a joke. Uh, so my songs are from 1978, and we're going to wrap up the uh, the driving playlist. So, of course, we mentioned this song, Copacabana by Barry Manilow. I still like that song. I don't care. You can make fun of me. Uh, Two Tickets to Paradise by Eddie Money. I loved Eddie Money, uh, and, and I was very happy in the 80s when he, when he had some comeback hits. I mean, that guy was cool. I've met him, seen him perform. Just a really cool dude. And then uh, I was a fan of novelty songs in 1978. I was a fan of Saturday Night Live. My mother would allow me to stay up on Saturday nights and watch it, which was very, very cool at that time, uh, was King Tut. What a great song that was. Great uh, novelty song. I believe it went to number one. If not, it certainly made it into the top ten. But it was a great song, a funny video. He performed it live. You got to see how hairy he was. I never knew how hairy he was. Great song. So that's my three songs for this week's uh, playlist. Um, I picked Grease Lightning from the Grease soundtrack. Nice. The road trip song. And uh, Running with the Devil by Van Halen. Mm -hmm. And then the last road trip song of the playlist, Baker Street. Oh, yeah. The saxophone. The song we used to call uh, and request every single night. Remember that show we would call every night and request Baker Street? Yep. Yep. Which is funny. I always thought that was the beginning of a, that Bob Seger song. Anytime the, you know, I would always get tricked. I'm like, that's this is Bob Seger. This is fucking Baker Street. Yes. But speaking of Bob Seger, one of my uh, driving around road songs for '78, of course, would be "Hollywood Nights" by Bob Seger. You just, don't got that on this list here. No, because I changed it because I forgot. I didn't realize you had missed you in the top ten, and that is that was one of my jams. My oh. Songs. Okay. So I changed it. I changed it. But you can put Miss You if you want to. We won't make it too complicated. And uh, my other one is, don't y'all think this outlaw bit's done got out of hand? Hell yeah. Whalen. It's my favorite style of country music is 70s outlaw country. Hell yes. I am behind you 100%. The absolute best because it's the most rockinest country. And uh, they don't give a crap. And they're snorting cocaine and shooting oh, people. Hey, done it that way. <laughs> y'all think that? And, uh, and, um, and then, of course, the timeless soul classic fantasy by Earth, Wind & Fire. Just a freaking, when you put this song on, you're in a pool, on a float, drinking a pina colada, the, the breeze is hitting you, I, or you're in a car driving. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's a sweet, drinking sweet a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know anyway, I that song. It's man. a great song. But anyway, those are my songs. Well, thank you, guys. I decided uh, between last week and this week that uh, I was being a, a, a poo-poo, poo-poo, poo-poo pants about talking about TV shows everybody's watching. I know a lot of people originally and still listen to Radio Labyrinth to get a lot of recommendations for things that they don't really know about. And certainly Jeff and Steph lead in that area. The problem this week is we are running very short on time. So starting next week, okay, we're going to, instead of what we're watching, where I limit it to the one thing, mm, uh, you have to talk about whatever the fuck you want. 10, 15 minutes talking about whatever you want. And if I have a question, I'll ask you or I'll make a joke or anything like that. We'll call it what Tim isn't watching because I'm currently more obsessed with YouTube rabbit holes and, and podcasts. But uh, we really don't have time because we're running up to 90 minutes here. So um, you want to just go ahead and do your your one thing and your staff pick. I promise next week we'll expand it if you don't mind. Is that cool with you guys? 
Sounds cool to me. I will say that my one, one thing that I've been obsessing over is extreme sweets. Yeah. Sugar Rush, Sugar Rush Extreme Sweets. I freaking obsessed with the show on Netflix. And it's just a, one of those baking shows and it's a competition thing or whatever. So if you have it, if you love these kind of things, yeah. I really enjoy this one. And uh, my staff pick, I guess Tyson is fighting a great white next week on uh, Shark Week. <laughs> <laughs> and it's called Tyson versus Jaws. Rumble on the Reef. I'm not sure if they're going to let him punch the shark or if any of that kind of stuff. But it's a, he said that he needed to get into better shape for his fight coming up with Roy Jones. So he thought, what well, better way than to fight a shark? Fight a dangerous fish. <laughs> but it's, anyway. Jabba Jaw. Jabba Jaw. I bet I could beat him up. <laughs> but anyway, it's Tyson versus Jaws. Rumble on the Reef. August 9th on Discovery Channel. Cool. And Jeff, I, is that cool if next week we expand it? Like yeah, to do it? So my, my staff pick for this week is that American Pickle movie mm -hmm. starring, starring Seth Rogen in, uh, as his his own grandson and grandfather who gets pickled and like Rip Van Winkle for 100 years. Oh, cool. That's on HBO Max on the August 6th. Do you think it'll be uh, enjoyable for someone who doesn't like Seth Rogen? Uh, how do you not like Seth Rogen? I just don't. I don't like him. What? Uh, well, I don't hate him. I like some of the things he's in. I don't. My, I guess my point is, I don't seek out Seth Rogen uh, projects. <laughs> it looks good though. I saw the previews. It looks a like a different actor, kind of movie. It's pretty yeah. funny. And you said you watched uh, Agents of Shield. That's back. Yeah. Well, this is the final season. I, I just wanted to point out to people that um, in the, in the early seasons of of Agents of Shield, Bill Paxton was the like the main bad guy. Mm -hmm. And since he passed this final season they have his son playing his character from they like went back in time is he a demon no but he looks just like him and he's like in the i'm like watching the show i'm like where did they get this guy that looks so much like Bill paxton yeah and then it, it turns out it's his son he looks more like his dad cool. than gandolfini's son looks like his dad gandolfini yeah. looks like he, he the was, kid has the, he has the teeth and the yeah. mouth and everything yeah. just like paxton don't you think Gandolfini's kid looks like he was made in a Gandolfini factory, but he was rejecting <laughs> out in the dumpster? Anyway, uh, so this week I didn't really watch a lot of anything new. I, the other night I, I went into a Don Rickles rabbit hole. I watched him do the 1984 inaugural ball, insulting the President Reagan and George Shultz and George Bush. It was fantastic. <laughs> Excuse me. And a bunch of his Tonight Show appearances. All these things happened because I listened to podcasts. Um, I was listening to last week's Talking Sopranos. Michael Imperioli brings up, uh, uh, they're talking about. Uh, uh, don't talking watch anything you hear on it, Days in the Valley or whatever. Yeah, don't do that. No, that's a good point. You, you, well, first of all, you go to jail if anybody finds it on your computer. Uh, but anyway, for some reason they're talking about James Dean and, and uh, Michael Imperioli loves James Dean and Stephen Sharip is like, he wasn't a good act. Anyway, a terrible impression. He, uh, <laughs> so they, they're talking about it, and then, then Imperioli brought up. Uh, uh, brought up impersonations that were done by Frank Gorshin. And if you, if you, Frank Gorshin, if you don't know who that was, was on uh, Batman. He was the Riddler. He was also on uh, Star Trek. He played the, the guy with black and white face, but he was a comedian and an impressionist. And back then when you were an impressionist, you had to know how to sing. You had to know how to tell jokes. You had to have an act. Now you don't need that obviously, but back then they did. And uh, he mentioned that he could, he could do a physical impersonation of James Dean and he did it perfectly. And then I, so I Googled it and I went to YouTube to watch it. And there's a show called the copycats, which I'd never, ever, ever heard of in my life. Have either of you ever heard of that show? I tried to watch a couple of them when, when you mentioned it, but I, I only, I got through like five minutes and I was like, this is, I'm not sitting through this. No, you, you, you really have to appreciate. Because it's but it was like every, every impressionist of the day, like Fred Travelina. Yeah. Well, he Rich. was young. That was very, very young Fred Travellina, right? Yeah. Rich Little. Rich Little. Mm -hmm. Frank uh, Gorshin. Frank Gorshin. And I can't remember his name, and I don't want to say the black guy. So I'm going to Google his name real quick because he was amazing. I, th this is the first video I saw when I, I went to YouTube, and I typed in the copycats. Uh, it popped up with this video of a guy doing um, Archie Bunker and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, Ralph Cramden. And right. he was African American, and I was like, "Holy shit, this guy! His name is George Kirby. This guy was super talented, 
And uh, like Jeff says, I mean, you, you really have to have patience to watch this show because it's not rapid fire comedy. Everything's subtle. There's performances, there's songs. You have uh, Marilyn Michaels, if you know who that is. She could do vocal impersonations of anyone. Uh, and she does Marilyn, uh, not Marilyn, she does Barbara Streisand. She did everybody from this time. But the thing that struck me, and, and then I'll shut up about it, was this show was on a network television show in 1972. So it's sort of post end of laughing era and pre uh, Saturday Night Live, and it is super subversive. Now, could you imagine a network show in 1972 having an African American guy doing an Archie Bunker impression on TV? To me, I think that's remarkable. And so the show, to me, feels like it's ahead of its time. And and they just did a good job lampooning. But Jeff is right. I mean, they do. It, it is hard to digest the show. But I highly recommend you watch the. You, it, it's spelled K O P Y K A T S. There's a great uh, video with uh, the real Tony, uh, not Tony Bennett, Tony Curtis playing Dracula. And then they're doing all the people of the times. So if you like old Hollywood and, and, you're, and you don't need a, a punchline every two seconds, give it a shot if you, if you like that sort of thing. And my staff pick is uh, uh, another old movie, but I think we're living in that time or certainly headed that fucking way. Uh, Idiocracy, uh, which is the extended version is on HBO all month. So I definitely think it's pretty. What's extra in the extended version? I don't know. I got to watch it. Great movie. Yeah, it's all overall a great film, and uh, and I look forward to, to watching it. And uh, other than that, that's just uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts. So. Go away, Baton. Yeah, go away, Baton. You broke my house. Your shit's all fucked up. And <laughs> there's <laughs> talk again. <laughs> oh, wait, he didn't say <laughs> did he said. You think that you better mix that word? You said the R word and the F word. Yeah, in I know. This podcast. I'm quoting movies. I'm not, I know. I know that. I, I know that. You, I, you. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about it. I didn't call anybody that, and I'm quoting things. I'm not saying them, and and, and that's my philosophy. If you're saying I'm something, joking, Tim. My God, you're, you're I'm going to quote Richard Pryor live on Sunset Strip. No, you're not. Oh. No, <laughs> no, you're not doing that. Police don't shoot cars; they shoot people. <laughs> all right guys this has been a fun show i like talking about 1978 i hope you liked it as much as we did please like and review our podcast wherever you listen to it share it with your friends please post it on facebook post it on social media or you know write it down in a letter and mail it to somebody i'll be on the wilder ride next week by the way if you okay. li- yeah, if you're gonna listen to that i just assume that they hated me and they deleted my episode but they're two weeks behind so it's next week yeah, I know. You're like me. What did I do wrong? Oh, you fucking hate me. Oh, I'm so oh no, we're just not running it yet because we're behind. Oh, no, I feel dumb. I hate you. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I have that tendency too. You guys have anything else you want to add before we wrap up? Any dog stuff? Yeah. Oh, yeah just same, you know, just donate foster barkfielddogrescue.org or please adopt uh, from your local shelter. They're filling up fast. Um, anything that you can do would be amazing right now so yeah that's it adopt don't shop blah guys, blah blah guys if you notice your dog doesn't want to eat and is lethargic and uh it's just moping around and won't get up to go to the bathroom or anything don't ignore it um we we just thought it was general age and then it got worse and worse and worse and, and we made a decision we got to take her to the vet right away we got her to the vet her heartbeat was 30 beats per minute now mm. that's not good for a dog <laughs> or anyone right. or anything that's alive and um they treated her they treated her with uh, an IV and she's the sweetest thing. She's an older dog. We just thought, Oh, it's that time, but it's not that time because they discovered that she had something called Addison's disease and uh, that is involving your adrenal glands. And, uh, and within three days she's back to herself. She's eating, she's running. She asks me to take her for walks, which she didn't do before. Little Rizzo, by the way, and she's named after since it's 1978, she's named after Rizzo from Greece. That's, and my wife named her after that. She, adorable dog, wonderful pet. And we were so sad. And then now we're so happy because she's energetic and everything. So pay attention to your pictures you posted. What's that? She looked pretty skinny in those pictures that you posted. You mean from last week? Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's a little dog, but she, like I said, she hadn't gone for walks in, in a couple of months and now she's like begging to go. So it's great. And no, I'm so happy for you that the treatment's working. Yeah, and you we you love your your pets, man. You love them. You gotta take mm-hmm. care of them. You know, take care of them as best you can. Even when they get older, you know, you want them around. You gotta you gotta pay attention. Steph knows for sure. So. Uh, I've got three oldies right now, and yeah. they require more care when they're old than they ever did. And 
just one of those things that you got to keep in mind when you get an animal is that just like you, they're going to get old. They're going to require more care. The only thing is, is that um, you are at least able to make the decision to let them go see the sweet Jesus. They don't have to wait around. You yeah. can actually pull that plug for them. Okay, so we, so, we do that for our dogs, but we stick our, our elders in the head, go in here and in this COVID. Set. See your sorry ass. Make sure you have your will updated. And then we decided to send them to various different homes throughout the state. And uh, after that, once we killed 30, 40,000 of them, we've been doing a great job in New York. I'm hoping to get banished to Hard Labor Creek at some point. What's that? Oh, shit. Yeah, no. Thing. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> All right, uh, guys, this has been fun. We'll talk to you <laughs> next week. And, uh, and uh, until that time, please remember to keep it canon. Keep it canon.